special edition, we're not in the air. We're gonna be setting rotors. We're gonna swap rotors with the machines. We're gonna align the rotor. And the idea is to teach more or less and show you guys how we align the rotors, how we test the rotors, how we balance a little bit, and some um, uh, small tips that you can use in your own gyroplanes. Doesn't matter the, the, the manufacturer, doesn't matter the manufacturer of the, of the rotor. The most important thing is you know the principles of the alignment and the tension and the balance they have. Remember, there's three important key parts on a gyroplane. First, they have to be, when you spin it, they have to be like a frisbee, then became a, as a kite when you start pulling the gyro, and then you're flying like with an umbrella. So, because all these three factors get together, the rotor became a really sensitive part of the gyroplane. So, maintenance and care is really important. Balance and alignment is the most important thing to reduce all this feedback and bad, bad, bad vibrations that you normally get, and sometimes you get annoying. Also, all these vibrations transmit to all the, um, the, the aircraft, and that can harm some joint parts, uh, the screws, and etc. So, welcome again to a new special video. We have technical video, we're not in the air, sorry about that. The most important thing right now, before we start uh, working on the rotor, is to have all the tools ready. These particular rotors are very simple. We're gonna need a um, uh, 17 millimeter keep, an Allen number six, and an Allen number eight. Number six for the teeter bolt, number eight for the rest of the of the screws and nuts that they are in the hub bar and connect the hub bar with the rotor. This uh, is a very nice invention from Poland. There is a single man line attachment that we can use. It's uh, very effective, it's very easy. So for one person just to keep tension on the, on the blades so we can align the rotor. Um, another thing that is very important for this is to be in a close uh, environment. We don't, uh, we don't want any wind or, or some wind current that, we can, uh, that can change a little bit the, the alignment of the, um, of the rotor. Uh, the line will be a little bit offset and it's because of the wind or some stream around. So we don't want that. And to finish the torque range, we're going to need um, 20 Newton meters or uh, the equivalent of uh, 15 uh, pounds square feet. This is what we need for this M10 uh, with nylon. It's very important to use nylon and always use fresh. If you remove it one, don't use it again. Use a, use a new one. Only on emergencies for one time uh, we, can, uh, we can use it again. So we're going to need 10 for each rotor plus one on the teeter bolt. So as soon as we have our tools, our tools ready, because we're gonna move the rotor, we don't want to start running around waiting for tools. So first we prepare all our tools, and then when we are ready with the tools, we just jump on top of the aircraft and we start moving the rotor. So welcome back. We are already up here. We make sure that everything is secure, that the bridge is secure. Most important thing is the rotor is in brake position. Um, some of the models, they have to put in brake position and full pressure on the pneumatic system. In this case, it's really simple. We just go full forward and pull the strap. So the rotor start pressing down in a negative angle right here, the brake pad. So we make sure that the rotor is safe and it's not going anywhere as soon as we remove it. The hot bar is uh, the, the hot bar is clean and every, and the U is in the same position. Some rotors have this the, the, the hot bar and the U on the rotor head. They should match. So you will find some point or something up here in the top to match those two. This is when you balance the rotor and when you marriage the uh, you make the marriage between the rotor and the machine. Every single rotor have to have a special configuration for every single machine. It can be the same model, all machines fly a little bit different and all the rotors behave a little bit different. So you learn that when you start testing and testing aircraft, you realize that even if you set this rotor for this particular machine and it's a good rotor, when you change it, you need to re 
balance a little bit, realign, and so on. Second, that is really important. If we're going to remove the rotor, if we're going to start moving around with people and twist it and, you know, up and down, there is a big chance that the alignment will be ruined. It's very sensitive. These ones are not as sensitive. They have a, an, M, an M10 nut, so they're pretty tough. The holes are a little bit bigger, and the hot bar, when they marriage all together, they do it with really precise systems, just to marriage the blade, the pocket, and the, and the hot bar. So the alignment these particular rotors on this manufacturer is really easy, because they're, they're, they're aligned by, them, by themselves. Sec uh, third, it's really important to have someone right there in the end of the, um, of the blade. So when we put the blade down, somebody will hold it and will secure the rotor. Meanwhile, I remove the teeter bolt here. As soon as we remove the teeter bolt, it can slide down or it can start moving. So it's very important to have two people, one person right there where you are, holding the rotor, putting it in down position. So it secures the rotor, it will not go anywhere. And second important thing, the stoppers, the teeter stoppers, the teeter stopper that all rotors have, it will make a little bit um, like a lever, like a lever um, action. So when we remove the teeter bolt, there is no friction and there is no torsion on the, on the teeter bolt. So it's very important to have that. And have the tools ready to go. All right, for this section, we're gonna need the 17 millimeters and the six millimeters Allen, all right? All rotors have a safety pin to secure the, 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 um, the nut not going anywhere when it's uh, spinning or vibrating. So first of all, we remove, try to remove it somewhere, somehow. No worries, we'll cut this. You don't have to struggle with me. And I promise this video is in the ground, but it's not going to be that boring. All right. By tradition, we put it here in the safety wire of the presentation on these models. It's kind of a tradition, small tradition we have. Back in Poland, they like positions. All right, so now we're gonna proceed to remove the tension on the rotor. When you attach the rotors, the tension, this tension is very important. Too tight, and you will have bumping on the cabin. Too loose, and you will have some side-by-side -side vibration. That means it's a, a little bit like an offset vibration. You will feel it in the joystick. So to avoid that, you have to as soon as you get contact, a little bit of tension, enough tension not to have side-by-side -side play, but not enough, not too much to make a teeter completely free. All right? So now we're going to remove the tension, and we're going to remove the teeter bolt. A very simple operation, but this is when I get, when we get tricky, because then Someone has to go in the front, hold the rotor down for safety, and to make a lever action to put it up so we don't have any torsion or uh, friction on the teeter bolt. So this is the right, this is the moment that you have to be careful because you will remove the teeter bolt nice and easy. It should go nice and easy. This camera maybe is easier to see how the teeter bolt goes. A little bit down on the rubber. Make the lever position. Just way more down. There we go. Alright. So that's a teeter bolt. This is holding the rotor and the aircraft. You're holding on this. So now we put it down. Just hold it, don't let it don't let it slide. You can switch size and it's easier. Just to put the tool. There you go. As soon as the rotor is out, you will see the hot bar, the cube, the junction points, and we're gonna put it down. It's always recommended to do it with a winch here, with a wheel winching. So you lift it up and then you put it down. We're gonna do it the old style. A lot of people would like this old style system. 
but you have to be careful when you lift it and when you put it down. So now what we're going to do, hold it, don't listen. Just lift the rotor and put it right down. There we go. Then the rotor is down and it's secure. Now we need to be ready with the saw horses. Minimum two saw horses just to make stable the rotor, all right? So as soon as the, the, the rotor is safe on the saw horses, um, we're going to do the line first to see the alignment of the rotor. And every ending of these particular rotors, we have a dent. So it's complete, this in the center and it goes lining completely in that end of the rotor. And then we come here, we have a small dot in the middle. We go to the other end. This is an 8.7 meters rotor. High performance, competition one. This is the rotor that won the European and the World Championship of gyroplanes. So, as it is, will never work. We need to make a small bow with the with the rotor, like making a kind of a tension. So we will see if the blades are a little bit unaligned or are straight forward aligned. The problem when the when they're not aligned is the the difference between the, the blade that is coming forward and the blade that is coming back, one is going to, is not gonna be in the same moment for the for the lift point. Alright? So that's because it has to be completely aligned. If it's a little bit forward one of the blades, that means this resonance, this, this symmetry of lift will be different than this one. And that's because you have this kind of dance and that dance will be in your joystick and that's because you're gonna feel a little bit dancing in the joystick like side by side kind of 40 degrees angle of boom 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 depends on the rpm and that remember what you're feeling is the whole system moving and shaking and you don't want all your mass and all the screws and all the cabin to start shaking like it is so when the rotor is fully aligned the, the symmetry of lift is perfect so the they cancel each other, so you will not have any feedback on it, all right? So the second thing we're going to do is going to remove the most closest one saw horses. There we go. And then the rotor will start in some balance tension. The idea is to make it as as low as is possible, kind of a half inch separation between the rotor and the line, all right? So we're gonna start playing a little bit with the saw horses, kicking a little bit out. There you go. More or less the same distance, but the important thing is we have here some space between. So as soon as we have some space and we see that, that the line is not touching in any point, for example, in that point, the line is touching part of the rotor, so it would it, it ruin our alignment. So you see here, it's touching. So you don't want that. You really don't want that. You, you need a, that the line is suspended from here to the other side. So now the line is not touching any part of the rotor so that we will be, make sure there is no influence soever with, the, with some friction on the rotor or something that can ruin our alignment here. And then we just bounce it a little bit and we will see if it's aligned or not. This one have right tiny miny on alignment. It's after the 100 hour service. So, if you put the camera around here, you can see what I'm talking about. So this is what we don't want. This point. It have to cross on top of the dot. 
So how are we going to achieve that? What do you mean by that? Sorry. It oh. have to be here. Oh, okay. This is the alignment. Now, if I show this, this is an unaligned rotor. It's not aligned. So that small an alignment, that means the blades are a little bit forward, like this, that gives us some vibration on the rotor. So clearly the rotor is flyable, but it's not really good aligned, so it's not good set. So right now what we're going to do is gonna remove all tension and all the five for each each five um, screws on, on, on the rotor. Anyway, as soon as we lost tension and because we're doing some service, it's better to replace the nuts. So don't get nuts or get nuts, the new ones, the fresh ones. So now that the rotor is loose tension that we can align, we can come back and see that when we lose tension, we can align the rotor. See? This is what we want. So when we apply tension, it should be 